What's going on YouTube? Evan here with Cloud9 Aquariums. A couple of housekeeping things I want to get started off with. First off, obviously, I just want to give a shout out to all 500 subscribers we just passed over. Really appreciate you guys. Um, it's cool that you guys really uh, want to support my channel. And you, I'm glad you guys like what I'm doing. So let's keep it rolling. On that note, start sharing my videos. You know, if you like it, you know, obviously give me a thumbs up, give me comments, send me messages if you have questions. You already know that routine. But another thing you guys can do now, too, to help me out um, is click that share button. You know what? Because the more people we got watching this channel, the more drive I have to keep making some videos. So by all means, please click that share button. Share it on all of your uh, little social medias and whatever you guys are into. Um, I really would appreciate that. But again, thanks a lot. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm glad we're having fun here. So, on that note, today we're going to be talking about um, aquarium lighting. Okay. Now, I've already talked about um, what kind of lighting I like to use, the cheaper methods. Um, one day we'll get into more expensive methods that, you know, if we're talking about what works um, ridiculously good. But today we're actually going to be talking about programming your lights. This may seem like something really simple, but I've actually been getting a lot of questions on it. I really kind of just want to go over it. So, what I like to do. Um, the major thing with programming your lights is you need to, um, obviously, like everything else, you have to have a plan. But with programming your lighting system, that's part of the trial and error that comes with lighting. Now, with trial and error for lighting, what I mean by that is, obviously, you're going to have to adjust your wattage um, and temperatures of bulbs. I mean... I really don't have to adjust the temperature. I know that I'm going to be growing plants, so I want something around 6,500 Kelvin. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Um, I don't really like to fill with that because either way on the spectrum, you're probably going to have some algae problems or your, your tank's not going to look that great. It's going to have a yellow kind of effect to it or blue or whatever. So I like how my fish look um, and I like how my plants grow. So my color temperature is good to go. Um, another thing that you can think about is wattage. Um, Nowadays, with the high output bulbs, and if you're trying CFLs and stuff like that, or LEDs, you can't do the watt per gallon rule anymore. Um, so, but with light intensity, you're basically going to be concerned with how high your lights are off the surface of your water and the depth of your water. Um, the major thing for that, everybody thinks you need to have highlights. Well, you don't have to have highlights because highlights, you know, if you want highlight, you're going to need highlight plants. You know, you can't just grow um, something like, well, baby tears, but dwarf baby tears are, you know, extreme highlight plant. They usually require highlight and CO2, you know, they're a very picky plant. Um, whereas you have other kinds of mosses or um, there's some kinds of swords. Um, I'm trying to think of specific low light plants. Um, most plants are kind of a moderate light, but um, there are some plants that like a moderate to low light. And so if you put them under highlight, A, they'll either grow like crap um, or B, they'll just die. They won't... It, it doesn't burn them, but, you know, they just, they can't, they can't handle it. It's too much for them. When I was, for instance, when I was running uh, Stargrass in here, I actually have, right there, I got my little last clump of Stargrass in there. It never, it just kind of grew into a little, not even a half-inch tall plant and just kind of chilled there for a while. And eventually it just never did anything, and um, it would just, I would just see it start uprooting, and eventually the quarry cats just kind of uprooted all of it and just disappeared from my tank. Now, in my 10-gallon which is kind of more of a, uh, a moderate light, it's more medium, it grows tall and lanky, and it's growing fine. I actually just clipped it because it was uh, it was way above the water height, you know, so I clipped it down, and I have two stems, and it's rolling like crazy. So, I, you know, it does depend. Some, you know, if you notice your plants aren't doing good, because it could be because your lights are too high, or it could be because they're too low. Um, but the type of trial and error I really want to talk today about is setting a timer. Now if you don't have a timer for the kind of person who turns the fish tanks on whenever you want in the morning or maybe you have a routine when you get up, um, same thing when you go to sleep, you know, that's alright. It, can it be done? Absolutely. You know, um, but timers, okay? I know a lot of us are trying to save money and you don't want to go out and get all this. Um, you're assuming you have to get these crazy digital ones, you know, and even that I wouldn't call it crazy, but you know what I mean. Um, it doesn't need to be that extreme. Um, timers can be really cheap, you know, you can get them for under $10, um, and if you're in the fish tank hobby and you can't really afford one of those, you might want to think somewhere else. Um, not saying that, you know, you have to be out abnormally rich to take care of fish, no, of course not, you can keep it cheap, I'm trying to keep it cheap for everyone, 
But um, at the same time, this is one of those things where I said there's a list of things that I would always spend my money on. Um, one is a water changer, so you don't have to carry buckets around. And two is a timer. Now, the major thing for timers, A, your fish are going to be a lot happier with it because, you know, just like you and me, we like to have a regimented schedule because we do a lot better. Same thing with them. You know, they need a constant day that they can um, rely on, to, you know, for the day and night. Same thing with your plants. You know, plants need a certain amount of daylight, and they also actually, believe it or not, do need some sleep too, just like your fish do. You know, they can't just go, you know, pump in 12, uh, 24 hours a day. So, timers are a great thing to start your consistency. And like I've said in my other past videos, especially when you're dealing with algae breakouts, consistency is key. So, um, this can be something that can actually help keep your tank balanced. I know there's that word again, I love balanced tanks. Because if you don't have a balanced tank, you're going to be struggling and you're really not going to have fun in this hobby. Um, so to keep this balanced, um, how long do you really want to keep your lights on? This is something, you know, there's people who say you need to have it this way and people who say you have to have it this way. I'm not really on any spectrum. I feel like every single tank is kind of different because it depends on the plants you're growing, depends on the lights you're running over the tank, um, the heat you're running the tank at, you know, all, I mean, there's so many different kind of factors. Um, and obviously you're going to have to adjust it because you're going to see, you know, you're, you're going to have an algae here or your plants aren't growing here or whatever. Um, and there's all sorts of different methods. So there's two kind of major methods of lighting um, time that I want to talk about. There's your standard day, which most people um, use, which is, you know, something around um, eight hours on, and then they turn it off for the rest of the remainder of the evening and night. And then it turns on for something around eight hours. Um, or there's the, I guess it's a Wallstead method. Um, I haven't actually read her book yet. I know all of you pros out there are kind of looking at me like, really, what is this like? What is this kid doing? I've actually learned from a lot of people who have read the book, so that's why I haven't read it yet. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Diana Wallstead has this book out. Um, I believe it's something, I don't even know what it's called. I think it's the Planet Aquarium, Planet Tanks. It's something about Planet Tanks. Um, that's where this the dirted tanks is primarily coming from. Um, so check it out if you haven't. I'm sure you can just Google her name and it would pop right up. Um, but one of her methods is actually um, something where you split up the day. So especially if you have like a natural light on your tank, which could be awesome, you can actually turn your tank on for four hours or five hours, turn it off for four hours, and then do it again for the same amount of time, for another five hours, and you can have it on for the remainder of the, of the night. Um, so on these tanks, so on my 40, 40 long and my 10 gallon, um, and my 90 downstairs, well actually no, on these two tanks I'm running about, it's about a nine hour day. Okay, so I, I turn them on at, I believe, 11.30, and they go off around 9. Um, that works for me. I'm already gone for work. I do wish I could see them in the morning when I wake up, but, you know, it's cool. I'm fine with it. Um, but I do like to have them on, you know, while I'm awake at night, because I want to be able to see them. Um, my tank downstairs, because it's kind of a grow-out tank, I actually run that tank a little longer. I believe I'm running that at about 11 hours. Um, but I'm probably going to pump that down pretty soon, because I'm starting to add some tanks into it which I know some of you guys have been asking me about how those Java mats are growing. I will show you those soon because um, one of them is actually doing fantastic. Another one was floating on the surface for a while and it just hasn't just been accumulating algae. It hasn't really done anything. But now that I got them suction cup to the wall, they're rocking. So I'll show you those when they look a little bit better, but the one is just kicking it. Um, but again, so my four, or 30 tall, I'm actually running this new Wallstead method because, again, in my last video, which I'm sure you guys know, I actually was dealing with a little bit of algae in there. I figured out what my problem was. A, my filter was completely clogged. I mean, just ridiculous. So it's definitely time for a little, uh, little maintenance on that one. And uh, B, my lighting was just, it was too much too long. So what I'm trying now, obviously I clean my filters out. It's running, rocking and rolling. But uh, now I'm doing the wall step method on that. So I'm actually turning them on in the morning, which is cool because I can see them, you know, before I go to work. I can check out my tank and see how it's doing. And then um, they turn off around, I believe, noon or something like that. And they turn on about 4 o'clock. And then they're on for the remainder of the evening. Same with my other tanks. Um, that one also has a natural light, too, because it's near some windows. So I have some windows open. There's nothing directly on it. Um, the back is covered, so there's no direct sunlight inside. But it's enough that, you know, it, it kind of feels like a cloud of data to the fish which is kind of cool because my, the plants are still getting a little bit of light, you know, they're not completely stopping photosynthesis and restarting it, um, but it is kind of giving the, um, a little bit of a break in the middle, which is going to help my uh, algae problem, hopefully, but not prohibit my plants from going crazy. Um, 
because that plant that tank is just getting ridiculous. So um, so that's two methods I like to use when it comes to programming timers. Um, I'm actually going to show you how I like to clean up under my tanks and program timers. So let's uh, I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to actually go to the 30 because I I like my setup down there a little bit better, and then we'll talk through a little bit about programming. Okay. All right. So now you guys are looking at my. The, the lower half of my 30, which is off right now because it's doing the Wallstead method, of course. Um, as you can see, I got my uh, canister filter down here and my trusty Home Depot bucket because I like to keep everything dry. I'm um, not saying that it leaks, but, you know, just in case. Um, now, here's how I like to run it. See, I got my timer right down here, as you can see. Um, it's just a simple push-button timer. So if you want to see if I can get in this without a... Uh, there we go. Um, so as you can see, you just push down the little little knobs for whatever time you want it to be on and then the other ones are when it's off and you just set where the time is now as you can see it is roughly five o'clock and it's about to turn back on so um, but what I like to do is uh, you'll see I run a power cord um, right here I bring one into my timer and then one of them goes into another circuit breaker now this is what I this is the key right here this is the master so now you all can know I like to run I know they look like the tape, that's because the tops fall off for some reason. But I have hooks to hold these onto the wall. Okay, I, I run two power strips under every single tank. One power strip, so the power strip on your left is my lighting system. So all those are just, I have three lights above this tank, as you probably already know. So I have three plugs into this. Pretty simple. Obviously, that's running into my timer. The other one is running into my power. That is for my, you know, filters, um, heater, air pump, all that kind of stuff. The cool thing about having one of these is when you have the switch on it, I definitely don't get the ones without the switch, okay? Because this is my key right here. When you're doing your little handy-dandy uh, water changes and such every week, it's a pain in the butt to have to unplug every single thing. So what do you do? You hit the button. It's genius, I know. So I turn off all my filters, all my heaters, everything I need to turn off before I do my maintenance, and I can still leave my lights on. So this is how we also make our life a whole lot easier and enjoyable. Another thing too is if you have um, an enclosed, because obviously this is enclosed, um, if you have an enclosed thing, get a little push button light. See that right there? This is another genius thing. It's a couple dollars, maybe under five bucks I'm pretty sure. You can get it anywhere. Um, just a little LED light burns zero batteries pretty much and it just sticks right onto the top and you just it's just a little tap light so watch. Oh wow. Boom. So when you want to see what's going on under here instead of you know banging your head a million times and trying to find stuff, um, you just hit that and you can find stuff. It's great. It's fantastic. So, that's what's going on. Here's the uh, 30 tall. It's, uh, as you can see, my carpet's pretty much gone. But I have some big news I'm actually going to be sharing with you in a second. So let's go over here. Um, as you can see. I want you guys to get a good look at this tank because here's my big news, okay? You ready for this one? This tank and the 30 tall are going to get completely aquascaped completely redone as of next week so um for two major reasons one i'm bored of this okay this is it's this one isn't going to look quite as different the 30 tall is definitely going to look different but i'm kind of bored of it it needs something new um because we got to keep it interesting okay so um that's one reason another reason is the 30 tall is underplanted, and that's my third reason for algae growth in there so i'm going to overplant the crap out of it it's going to be ridiculous um, I have nine different varieties coming, um, getting shipped in the mail. I'm going to do a little unboxing video so you guys can see what's up with that. And then I'm gonna also going to recommend this place to you because so far, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything until I get the box. Um, but so far, my experiences with this company have been nothing but amazing. So I'm really happy about um, when I get plants from them. Um, that's where my Madagascar lace and my baby tears actually came from. Which, can we just talk about this for a second? Because, dude, these baby tears are just, I mean, they're going ridiculous. What's up, little Cory cat? Emerald Cory is just getting fat. But everybody's doing good. Mr. Bose and Sam are just rocking out, showing some good color. Angels just keep getting bigger, even though I thought they were almost full-grown. Uh, I guess they'll just grow for years, so getting huge. Definitely Rose Lion Sharks looking sick. They're going to trump those, uh, the rainbows pretty soon. It's not going to be long. Can't wait. 
But uh, so that's what's going on. So take a good look at it. This is probably the last time you're gonna see it looking, you know, like this. It's gonna, it's gonna be sick. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Um, but again, uh, you know, I another reason why I wanted to get some new stuff was uh, it's time for some plant videos. Uh, I want to get some specific stuff with species. Um, and I need some stem plants and stuff like that to propagate, so you guys can see what's going on with that. And so it's time for some new species, because I'm kind of sick of just running baby tears, a little bit of Nubius, and a ton of jungle vow mixed with some mosses and stuff. So, uh, it's going to be rolling. Uh, here's your little sneak peek at 10. It's coming along, slowly but surely. Uh, but, you know, it's it'll, it'll be there. It'll be there. It's, it's nothing. I'm not really, you know, pumping it to, to achieve a great show tank. It's just going to be something cool. We're going to get a couple little cherry shrimp going in there. Um, I actually got one right now. He's chilling on, uh, I'll show you him actually. I don't know if you can see him. He's chilling on that leaf right up there. On uh, that star grass I was telling you about. Look at all that star grass in the back. Yeah. Oh, and there's that, uh, if you guys have watched my Java Moss, my uh, little tutorial with the basket, that's one of them right there. See how it kind of grows on a clump? It's pretty sweet. All right, so that's what we got going on. I uh, hope this helps your lights. Uh, some of you who don't understand the timer concept, hope this kind of encourages you to do, do it because, well, it's kind of necessary and uh, it helps us all out. It makes life a whole lot easier. So take it easy. Next week, expect a ridiculous amount of videos about plants. Um, definitely an unboxing video. Definitely an aquascaping video. Um, definitely some tank updates because it's going to be rolling. I mean, it's going to be ridiculous up here. There's going to be a lot of plants. So. My my hands are gonna be uh, they're gonna be pretty uh, raisined up nicely by the end of the week by how much I'm gonna have my my hands elbow deep in the tanks. So uh, take it easy, have a good weekend. Um, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Uh, we really appreciate all you guys do for us, especially when you let us get into crazy hobbies like this. But uh, either way, have a good one. Uh, so sh share, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, like this video, leave me comments inbox me all sorts of fun stuff and uh take it easy hope this brings you and your fish tanks a little closer to cloud nine